Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Baraka Hakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you, brothers, endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off in 2nd Esdras chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, which is exactly what the true men of the Lord, the prophets of the Most High, chiefly through GMS or Great Millstone, as well as the brothers that come in the spirit of Great Millstone are doing by reading the scriptures and watching the news and then filtering the news through the scriptures to prophesy when they go out onto the highways and byways or put up video epistles online to tell the elect of the nation of Israel of the terrible times to come and what they need to do to stain the good graces of their power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and to also tell the wicked of our people, two thirds of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are the children of Israel in America, as well as the wicked of our people globally, and also you heathens of the terrible judgments to come from Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, for all the iniquity you've been committing. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made to again judge you people for all the wickedness you've been committing during these times of Jacob's trouble we're quickly coming into. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, some of the signs to look for to know that we're in the times of Jacob's trouble and we're living in the last days before the second coming of Yahweh Shai Hamashayak, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus Christ, the end of this age of the rulership of the heathen nations, chiefly by the biblical Edomites, who are known as these so-called white people, and also the ushering in of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Israel, under the children of Israel, which will last for eternity. And these signs are taking place as we speak, as well as the other signs Yahweh Shai talked about in Matthew chapter 24. They're in the process of taking place or taking place as we speak. The famines, the pestilences, the wars and the rumors of wars. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning, and an end and the end is manifest and the end is manifesting right before our very eyes and in this video i'll be dealing with the uproars of the people this is an article from businessinsider.com titled risk of civil unrest surging in more than half of the world's countries analysis says uproars of the people in the world and as we'll see in this article a People all across the planet are getting in an uproar over this energy crisis and these food shortages that are coming. And a lot of these things are being orchestrated by the elites to crash this global system and bring in their new digital system, that NW0, that G-R-E-A-T-R-E-S-E-T, -E -E that fourth industrial revolution, where they want you people to be uh, implanted with the karagma the RFID slash NFC M I C R O C H I P I M P L A N T in Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 to 18. The M A R K O F T H E B E A S T. And uh, food is one of the biggest motivators out there to get people to do whatever you want. It's clearly an essential, as that devil Henry Kissinger said. Control oil, you control the nations. Control food, you control the people. But ultimately, this is through the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai to again bring judgment on this planet for all the iniquity you people have been committing. The world is bound for more disruption and unrest in the next six months, an intelligence firm said. Its analysis said the risk of civil unrest has increased in 101 of the 198 countries it tracked. It cited inflation and the energy and food crisis linked to the war in Ukraine as key factors. 
And as the brother Bakara Mafia has uh, said, this whole war in Ukraine situation has been the perfect cover for the powers that be to further crash the system to bring in their new system without any accountability or blame placed on them. Oh, all this is uh, taking place. The energy crisis, the food shortages, inflation because of Putin's war in Ukraine. The risk of civil unrest has surged this year in more than half of the world's countries, signaling a coming period of heightened global instability fueled by inflation, war, and shortages of essentials, a new analysis says. According to Varisk Maplecroft, a UK-based risk consulting and intelligence firm, 101 of the 198 countries tracked on its civil unrest index saw an increase in their risk of civil unrest between the second and third quarters of this year. The firm wrote in its Thursday report that only 42 countries saw a decrease in such risk. Although there have been several high profile and large scale protests during the first half of 2022, the worst is undoubtedly yet to come, it added. An apostle Tahar has deemed 2022 to be the year of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai turning things up. And we can see in 2022 that Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai has turned things up exponentially. And hey, 2023 is just uh, going to continue on that trend. There was a, one of these pundits out here that deals with these issues that came out with an article recently saying that 2023 is going to be the year from hell. As it says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. We're just in the beginning stages of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai bringing judgment onto this planet. So you better buckle up because it's about to be a, a hell of a bumpy ride. Varisk's index is based on several factors, including inflation levels, how countries respond to dissent, and how devastating an impact civil unrest could have on a country's infrastructure. The report said that nations such as Peru, Kenya, Ecuador, and Iran have seen discontent emerge on their streets because of rising costs. According to Varisk's index, Sri Lanka saw the most significant decrease in government stability as mass protests over the country's worst economic crisis in modern history ousted former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in July. And as these uh, protests, these uproars of the people, civil unrest intensifies in these different countries, and these people are going to come more and more against their government officials because they see that they're not that they don't have their best interests at heart. Don't be surprised when you see uh, assassinations and killings of these political figures. A couple of months ago, I did a video showing that over here in the United States of America, with each successive year, violent threats towards public officials have been increasing. And this is all a part of biblical prophecy as well. This is 2 Esdras chapter 15, verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men and the definition for that word sedition is conduct or speech inciting rebellion against a ruling authority or monarch and invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor princes and your modern day kings and princes are these political figures mayors governors senators presidents prime ministers as well as the authorities that uphold the system like the police or the military and they're not going to regard them as the situation continues to deteriorate out here. And they're going to be in that seditious spirit going against them, fighting them and putting some of them to death. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Some of the nations most at risk of civil unrest are middle income countries, which had the funds to offer social protection during the C-19 situation but are now struggling to maintain spending vital to their populations, the researchers wrote. Richer countries in the European Union face the same risks, with dissatisfaction likely to rise in Switzerland, the Netherlands, Germany, and Bosnia and Herzegovina due to the fallout from the war in Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is supercharging food and fuel prices 
and stoking a cost of living crisis across the globe, the firm wrote. However, the worst effects are yet to kick in. Meanwhile, energy shortages in Germany have led to blackouts and extreme power price hikes, with the country's top regulators stating that the nation must cut back on gas usage so it can later endure the coming winter. The Netherlands, which typically imports 15% of its gas from Russia, also faces a dilemma over whether to ramp up drilling in its gas-rich Groningen region and risk triggering what more devastating earthquakes that have already severely damaged 26,000 homes <laughs> back in 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, inflation will likely be felt more keenly over the next few months and is expected to worsen in 2023, Varys wrote. That's pretty much it with this article, you get the point. Hey, but as we can see, these end time signs, indicators to know that we're living in the last days, really the last seconds of the last days, are either in the process of taking place or taking place as we speak. Our salvation is near than when we believe, Akim. So now more than ever, you should have all 10 toes down in this truth, pushing this word as hard as you possibly can to make your calling and election sure and have that protective hedge of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai over you to save you from these calamities of Jacob's trouble, which are quickly coming. So that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. We're almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say a bad babo, kwam yasharala, and until next time, shalom.